So it's basically a light, fluffy sponge bottom layer with a thin layer of caramel and almonds baked on top. The ratio of sponge to caramel is just right to balance out the sweetness and it's perfect with a cup of tea. Hey guys, welcome to Tea for Two. Today I'm excited to share with you one of my favourite cakes, the classic Swedish Tosca cake. Preheat the oven to 175 degrees Celsius, fan assisted, and set the oven shelf to the lowest level. For this recipe, we're going to use a 20 cm springform pan, but if you prefer a thinner layer of sponge, you can use a 24 cm pan instead. Line the bottom of the pan with some baking paper. Then, brush the edges of the pan with a thin layer of softened butter and cover that with breadcrumbs. Do this by pouring some breadcrumbs into the pan and then tilt and turn it until everything is coated. First, we're going to make and bake the sponge base. So start by melting 100 grams of butter, either in a microwave or on the stove, whichever you prefer, then set it aside. Into a small bowl, sift together 120 grams of plain flour and one teaspoon of baking powder, and also set this aside. Next, take a large mixing bowl, crack in both eggs, add 135 grams of caster sugar, and whisk on medium to high speed for a few minutes until it's pale and fluffy. Once you have something like this, we can add the bowl of dry ingredients and whisk at the lowest speed setting or by hand until everything is just combined. Next, add in the milk and whisk that in before finally adding the melted butter and continuing to whisk on a low speed until just combined. I'd recommend stopping a little early and swapping to a rubber spatula to scrape down and fold through the batter to make sure everything in the bottom is incorporated. Pour the cake batter into the cake pan and bake on the lowest shelf for 20 to 25 minutes. While the cake is in the oven, we can work on our caramel topping. So in a large saucepan, add all the caramel ingredients, 100 grams of butter, 90 grams of caster sugar, two tablespoons of milk, and one tablespoon of flour, and melt everything together on a low to medium heat, stirring from time to time to prevent uneven cooking or burning. I like to add the almonds after I've given the caramel a head start, but it's fine to add them with everything else. Keep heating it slowly until the caramel starts to thicken, but avoid boiling or browning the caramel too much at this stage, as it will continue to caramelize in the oven later, and we don't want burnt bitter caramel on our cake. Once the sponge base is ready, we want to quickly pour and spread the caramel and almonds over the top with a spatula if needed, and then return it to the oven. This time baking in the middle of the oven for a further 15 minutes or until the top is nicely caramelized and brown. When you take the cake out of the oven, the caramel will be bubbling hot, so let it cool, but before it sets completely, run a knife along the edge to remove it from the pan. If the cake is set up enough, you can move it to a cooling rack and then just walk away and let it cool completely for a couple of hours. And that's it, a caramel almond cake to share with friends and family or just another tea for two. If you're interested in more of our recipes, you might want to check out some of our other videos linked here.